Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go through the next 10 sections on free code camps. Um, this is the new responsive web design certificate and we're doing the learn HTML by building a cat photo app. So let's go back to number 41. And if you remember, we've started to build out our web page. We've got some sort of heading texts and H2s here. We've got a form, some photos and links and all sorts. Um, so now step 41 is to use the button element to create a clickable button. So for example, button click here. This creates a button with the text click here because the text is in between the two button tags here. Add a button element with the text submit below the input element. Um, the default behavior of clicking a button without any attribute submits the form to the location specified in the forms action attribute, which we don't have an action attribute for, oh no, we do, it's over here, submit cat photo, and that, well, that's the for URL anyway. So let's create a button and we need to close that off like so. And the text oops, inside that was uh, submit like so. And if I try and go back over to the page now, you can see if I bring this over, there's our submit button. Um, and you can see obviously if I click that, it will, it will go off and submit whatever data we've got, um, or at least sort of, um, yeah, submit the form to that link. So let's check that code. Congratulations, cool. On to the next one. 42, so even though you've added your button below the text input, they appear next to each other on the page. This is because input and button elements are in line. So as you can see, they're in line elements here. Um, I think that's probably something we'll come up against when we have uh, look more to CSS, but as you can see, obviously, all of these other elements so far appear um, sort of vertically, and if you add an extra item, it will appear beneath the one above. Um, but for for these items and all these elements, they're in line, so they're horizontally. So um, we just need to button. We've added submit by default. We're we're relying on default behavior. Um, can cause confusion. So we need to add the type attribute with the value submit to this button. Um, so we want to make sure that, I guess the browser knows that is, this is a um, submit button. So obviously the browser just sees the text, that could be anything, but the actual button needs a type. Um, and there's a few different types I think you can give it, but we'll have submit for this. There we go. 43, we can use the radio buttons for questions where you only want one answer out of multiple options. So, for example, this is an example, um, I guess, sort of HTML um, for one option. And then the input elements are self-closing. So let's just grab this and we just want to change it to indoor as the type, uh, let's see, oh sorry, before the input text, add a radio button with the option set as indoor. So this is going to be actually above <coughs> above that. The type is radio um, indoor. And if I scroll down, we can see we've got our cat form and you can select if it's indoor. Um, let's see, there we go, that passes. Uh, 44, oops, let's just ask me later. 44, label elements are used to help associate the text for an input element where the input element itself, especially for assistive technology like screen readers. Um, so labels are, are really quite good to use. Um, obviously, so, you know, if you come up to um, a form using a screen reader, you need to know exactly what each element is and sort of what it's expecting um, in that form. So we can wrap this inside a label tag. So let's do that. And then at the very end, we'll do label like so. And let's just see if that answers it. Perfect. Um, 45, so the ID attribute is, is used to identify specific HTML elements. Each ID attributes value must be unique from all other ID values for the entire page. Um, so we need to just need to add an ID attribute to this input element and this will be indoor. 
So now we know if this is selected, for example, the, the ID is indoor um, based on this text here. And then if you've got multiple attributes, you know, they'd have different IDs. So outdoor, for example, there's another option here. Perfect. It's 46 is to create another radio button below the first one. And we can nest it actually inside the, oh no, we need to nest it inside a label again. So let's create um, just a line below that and just copy and paste here. That's fine. And what we want to do is yep, have this as outdoor. So the ID will be outdoor type still radio. Um, and then the actual input element is outdoor as well. So we can see here we've got our options indoor or outdoor. Perfect. So 47. So you might have noticed there as I was showing the demo that actually both of these can be selected. But because they're radio buttons, we only want one type um, or one of them to be selected at, at any one time. Um, and if you sort of click the other one, I believe the other one, the one that you haven't selected now, um, should sort of come off almost or, and not be highlighted. So to do that, they must have the same name. So I'm just going to grab indoor outdoor. And for each of these, I wonder if I can do that. Yeah, so that was selecting the alt or the option key. I can do name equals uh, like so. And then if we do that now, we indoor, if I select outdoor, you can see that jumps over and we've got now outdoor selected and then back to indoor. Um, so that should solve that challenge. It's 48. So if we select the indoor radio button and submit the form, the, the form data for the button is based on the name. So here and the value. Um, so since the radio buttons do not have a value attribute yet, the form data will include uh, indoor, outdoor, on, which is not useful when you've got multiple buttons. So we just need to add a value attribute um, to this. So again, I'm going to select both of them. We'll do value equals, um, let's do indoor first. And then just remember to change the other one to outdoor where it's specified like that. So that matches the ID basically, which is also unique for that individual input element. Like so, there we go. Uh, step 49. So the field set element is used to group related inputs and labels together in a web form. Field set elements are block level, meaning they appear on a new line. So we just want to nest the, um, yeah, want to nest the indoor and outdoor radio buttons within a field set. So I believe I'm going to field set around the whole thing, including the labels. So let's do just get our tags first. I'm going to put this at the bottom here. And we haven't really been indenting um, as we've gone so far. So I'm going to do that now. So then we've got, we just need to get rid of this one. We've got our label and then we've got our input um, like so. So let me move that over. Is that going to go? Okay, let's try that. Um, and maybe if I drop this down to the next line, it should try and sort of format a bit better. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. Let's see um, if we've got that. But there we go. So ideally, this should be moved over. Um, and actually, our labels can also move in um, just a bit there. So the labels are in line and then inputs in line as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that's quite right. It's a bit difficult to work out um, on the ID here, but anyway, that's com completed the challenge. Um, so that's where we're gonna probably stop then for this one. Um, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.